it's time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Hour Live. Today is October 9th. Wednesday, October 9th. Forgot what day it was for a second. S&P up 32, NASDAQ up 140, Russell up 4, Dow up 386. Gold up uh, down about a third of a percent, silver up a third of a percent, notes and bonds a little bit red, 10-year yield up three quarters of a percent, oil slightly red, natty gas down almost 3%. All the grains are a little bit green, euro and the pound a little bit red, Bitcoin down 1.5%. VIX down 3%, sitting at 20.77. Uh, on my British iron condors, currently up about 1,500. I've had a few one-sided stops. I did do one tranche, and I manually closed it uh, before the FOMC minutes. Uh, but everything else is kind of my normal big tranches. I'm up a few hundred bucks on my BIC price action, and I've got this uh, tranche on right now. It's on the 80s and 90s. I've got a Wuga that I just put on in SPX. That's on the short strikes, uh, the 80 and the 85. And then I did my early one on NDX because in my Trader account, I had a... Uh, strike conflict with my five seven double calendar um so this is my ndx early wooga it's kind of hugging the upper upper break even uh, another good day for double calendars closed out my five seven uh, my last piece of that hit 40 percent my six seven I've cl i closed half of that at 20 percent the other half I have a profit target in to close at 40%. It's currently up about 33-ish. Uh, my 3-4 is green. I put on a 1-2 earlier that's up a couple percent. And, oh, my 1-DTE from this morning, it got stopped out. So full loss on that one. I, I was up about 10% or so. I was, it was, I was live streaming for the day trading and... Um, I had planned to transform at least part of it, but didn't have a chance before this big monster move up. Of course, SPX crushing through new all-time highs. All-time high now, 57.90. Um, I think that's about it. For, oh, I had some day trades this morning. Google hit me pretty good. Uh, took a loss in coin, but then got some of it back on a second trade. Um, Netflix, I've been kind of getting in and out of, I'm, I'm profitable on Netflix now, still holding some, see if we can get one more push through all time highs. And then, um, let's see, what was my other one? Um, my other, oh, Roku, I took some off for a profit and then it flushed. And so that was a small loser. And so that's it. Chad, how's your day? Yeah, not too bad now. Um, put on the one DTE and uh, man, within like 45 minutes, it was 20% profit. And I actually had a 20% target put in there, but I lowered it to 20 to 25%, which is my normal one. I thought today with CPI coming in tomorrow, let me just go ahead and take early profits on it. And because I got there so quickly, I didn't. And then all of a sudden the put put push up happened, and it, my entire toss locked up on me. I'm, I closed it out, got on my Surface Pro. Same exact same thing was happening there. 
So you probably read some of the stuff in my channel about that. Um, once that was all over and done with, it ended up being a $360 loss for my one DTE. Somehow when I, when it finally started working, it was actually closed out. Um, for a, how it got closed out, I have no idea. But anyway, ended up being a $360 loss and toss support wanted nothing to do with fixing it. Anyway, my lunchtime number one then, I got in um, 20, 40, 60 and out. I put on a power hour trade here at the bottom of the hour and it has already hit 20%. And I'm about 20 cents from hitting 40% on that. I am in the, which wood am I in? I'm in the 7585 Wuga. And it is currently up 32%. So pretty darn good, all things considered. Good. Good. Uh a lot of there's some red stocks, even with uh, prices and in indices hitting the all time highs. For example, Google's down two percent. Sounds like there's some DOJ issues going on with them today. Roku down two percent. Tesla down one. Uh, Baba down one. Coinbase down a half percent. Nvidia's red. Meta's red. On the green side. SMCI is up. Piton is up. A bunch of little junky stocks are up. Uber's up a couple percent. But for a uh, you know S and P up a half percent, quite a few quite a few red stocks. And NDX up 064 percent. Some of these stocks just not participating. Uh, Chessmaster, I was going to transform it into an upside vertical for tomorrow. Would have been my preference. See if we can get a run after CPI. So tomorrow, pre-market is CPI and unemployment claims. We've got a few Fed speakers in the morning. Cook starts speaking 15 minutes before the market opens. Barkin starts speaking an hour after the market opens. And Williams, an hour and a half after the market opens. And then Friday, pre-market PPI. And a few more Fed speakers in the morning. No, I was not going to close out the call side. I was going to transform it into a risk-free upside vertical. Which, usually when I get to about 10%, I can remove the risk at that point and do that. But, like I said, I didn't, didn't have a chance. So, I ended up taking a full loss on it. So Chessmaster, what I would have done here, let me pull it up. Okay, so this is this is the one DTE that I got filled on this morning. So what I would have done is I would have created an opposite order and then on the short call that I would have been buying back. I would have done that one strike different. And you know, I probably kind of could have got filled somewhere around 1450 on that. So it would have created this risk-free upside vertical with a minimum guaranteed profit.
need a little bounce here for my price action BIC. Freedom Calls, are you on here? I mean, SPX had quite a little run there of Chad's favorite little green bars, just one after another. Finally broke out and just been kind of chopping sideways since, but that's quite a little run. Yeah, you, you can imagine the panic on my on my face when your platform is frozen and it's running like it is. Right. Yeah, and it didn't sound like anybody. Uh, I mean, I didn't have any issues. It didn't sound like anybody no. else did either, huh? No. And the thing that was weird about it was, you know, I'm sitting here with my laptop, and it and it's it has two screen, it's three screens total with my laptop. Then I have my Surface Pro also three screens total. So I immediately closed it down on my laptop and went over to my Surface Pro, logged in, and when it opened up. It said the exact same thing, and it wouldn't let me do anything. Wouldn't let me cancel an order. Wouldn't let me close it. Wouldn't let me do anything. So it wasn't just the device. That was a new one for me. Yeah, I haven't seen that. <clears throat> It literally went from being up about 10%, my uh, one DTE, to being down 25%, like instantly. So that's, I knew something was wrong because price hadn't moved that much yet. So that was my first tip that something was off with my platform. Finally, I finally had enough of the support chat guy. And I I said, listen, this is this is this is worthless. This is a waste of my time. I'll just solve this problem myself. <laughs> and I put I posted a screenshot of this in the chat. <laughs> That is where I'm trading my Wooga. I'm actually kind of like right, bring him over to the good side. I kind of like him trading side. these iron condors are easy to trade in SPX, man. You just click that little button up there that says normal iron condor, and you drag your just drag the, the where you want the strikes to be, and man, it's super simple. No, web version didn't work. It was couldn't do anything on that either. And I just hit uh 20%, no, 40% on my power hour trade. The the long puts have been very uh been holding their value. 
Um, it's volatility. Yeah. Does that uh, want to contract too much? I, yeah. I when know. I closed my lunchtime trade out at 60%, my long puts were still 40% or I'm sorry, 40 cents. Like usually by that and by then after you've hit 20, 40, 60, they're like 10, 15 cents. I will be at the Royals versus Yankees game tonight, my friends. As will I. I'll be arriving a little bit late due to Stone's football practice. Yeah, I can't go till a little bit later as well. So I'll be uh, rooting for the boys in blue. You would be a Yankees fan chess master. You would. Oh, no, we got another Yankees fan. Are you guys from New York or are you just bandwagon Yankees fans like everybody else? Like if you're a Mets fan, you're a real you're a real fan. <laughs> OK, all right. If you're from New York, I'll I'll give you a pass. I could use a little push up to hit my 20%. My Wugas are still in range. A little bounce back up to 85 would be perfect. SJ, are you on Zoom? I saw your post in the BIC channel.
Yeah. Hey, Vlad, I see you posting on the uh, Zoom chat. Do me a favor, post in that Zero Live chat channel in Discord. I'm going to... Uh... Disable the Zoom chat just because I don't really check it. I just saw a little notification pop up. So let me know. Let me know if you can hear me post in the Zero Live chat channel. There we go. All right, cool. So when uh, when we first started trading Power Hour and and started doing this this live stream for the last hour of the day, uh, a lot of us were trading kind of a, a three tranche power hour that you were referencing um, in the power hour class. And then it started not performing well. And then I kind of segmented it into, um, you know, down days, normal days, up days. And the up days, I think is still very valid, although I haven't, I haven't traded it and I haven't actually even looked at the back tests here for a few months, but um but the but the update certainly is still a very valid way to trade it. Like today was a perfect example. SPX was up uh, over five over a half percent from the open, and and so today would have been a good day to trade it. But the reason the real reason I I stopped is just because I I started trading things a little bit differently. Um, one you know kind of like Chad does with just looking at price action. So instead of just going in and placing trades at a specific time per the back test, I just liked, I kind of gravitated to liking um, of waiting for, you know, perceived consolidation before entering. So I started doing more just price action based entries uh, during, during power hour. And then here recently in the last couple of months, I've started trading a lot of uh, what we're calling the British iron condor, which is where we're managing the, the put and the call side separately. So I've, I've gravitated to doing a lot of my iron condor stuff that way. And so I've just, you know, I can't, obviously I can't do everything. And so that's, that's kind of how my trading has evolved. Um, but like I said, I think, I think, you know, still trading that three tranche update power hour is still very valid. You want to be, you may want to do a little bit more testing on kind of what I call neutral days or normal days where you're not down up or down over a half percent from the open. Um, those days typically perform the worst, but, um, but, but the up days I think are still very, um, very legitimate from a performance standpoint and continue to do well. Oh, and then the other thing is if you look at my trade plan, um, the Wooga trade. So Wooga is the name of one of our members and he started sharing a, a trade that he was doing. And so it just kind of caught on. So we just call it the Wooga, um, but that's a, a another trade that you'll see in my trade plan that I that I trade almost every day, if the conditions are are right for it. Where it's a trade where you've got narrow wings and no uh, no stop, so you just position size based on you know if you if you were to take max loss on the trade, but your wings are so narrow that you can do that pretty easily. So hopefully that helps. So what's uh what's your what's your experience trading options? Are you brand new? Years of experience? What's uh what's your what's your experience level trading? About five years. Perfect. Neo noob on a day like this, what delta do you use during power hour? I don't. I don't really do much on as far as targeting deltas anymore. I look at more just targeting a specific premium. You know, so a lot of times um, during power hour now, premiums are really low. Even with the VIX over 20, the premiums are pretty getting pretty low at the end of the day. Um, but typically, you know, if 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 premiums are high. I'll target closer to $4. If premiums are low towards the end of the day, I'll be targeting $3.
you know, so if you're targeting three bucks, you'd be looking at a five wide. You'd be on the 85, 80s right now if you were to enter a new position. Oh, SPY. So you want to divide by 10 on everything with SPY. So you'd be looking at, you know, 30 cents would be kind of your target if you're if you're looking at SPY. Yep, SPY is, is one tenth the size, so just divide everything by 10. So that I would just be if I was targeting three dollars on a strike in SPX, I'd be I'd be targeting 30 cents. So that's just that's just for your short strike. And then you choose your the width of your wings. Right. So, I mean, SPY is getting pretty, pretty sparse here. I mean, you would almost have to do a straddle in SP, SPY. I mean, you've got 18 or 19 cents here on the call side and 36, 37 cents. That's going to be pretty tough to do much in. I mean, SPY is it's still good to practice with because you're not risking a whole lot of capital. But if you if you did something like this where you sold the 577 and sold the 576 and then bought the wings two strikes wide. Um, you'd be looking at a 46 cent credit for an iron condor in SPY right now. So it'd be something like this. You just need to understand, you know, depending on what commission rates you're paying compared to the amount of potential profit you have. Obviously, that's going to eat into your eat into your profits quite a bit more because the commissions relative to your profit potential are, are it's a bigger percentage. But even so, I think you know, if just starting out, and if you're just trying to learn it and you know, trade something other than paper trading, spy is a great a great tool to practice on. Even though you know the focus shouldn't be on the profits necessarily. It should just be on the execution and learning. And so you can, you certainly could still do it. Uh, fully loaded. So yeah, option Omega is always Eastern time. I'm central time. So yeah, it would be 245 Eastern or 145 my time. Fully loaded diaper. <laughs> it's got to be a background there. It's got to be a backstory. All right, getting a little bounce here, hitting twenty percent. Doesn't need to bounce too much. Those one of these. I need a Wooga win today. Wooga is due for a win. I do, yeah, DRB. Just the shorts. DRB, what which broker do you use? Okay. Yeah. So and, and then are you using Trade Steward or just manually trading it? Okay. So yeah, I would just I would just put the stop on that on that short strike. Trade Steward is a an automation software, like a bot trading software that allows that connects to Charles Schwab. So for example, I'll bring it down here, Neo Noob. So here is here's what the kind of the dashboard looks like. So if you're trading these 
big trades where you're doing multiple tranches, it really makes it a lot easier to to enter and manage them. Um, so it kind of shows each position, your profit and loss percentage, dollar amount, gives you the ability to scale down the position size, close it, disable it, just allows you to kind of manage the position from the from the bot dash uh, dashboard and you can you can set up the bots and have them automatically enter at specific times based on specific criteria we've got a total uh we've got a trade steward channel if you scroll down a little bit it's got more details PX getting a little bouncy. A little bouncy. Uh, the matrix. Sometimes it can get a little dicey if I have if I have a ton of positions, but um, you know, one thing like one thing I'll do sometimes is I'll I'll go to my trade steward dashboard like I just showed you cuz a lot of these are entered in in trade steward and I'll say okay which strikes am I on on this one here oh yeah it's the uh, 90s and 80s and then I then I'll go to my toss platform here and and check them the other thing is you can use groups so on the monitor tab you can set up groups and so once you're in a trade just move it into that group and then you can select just that group from this little drop down here and that helps as well. So I'll do that sometimes. Yeah, that's exactly what I've been doing, Joseph T, because the the premiums have been getting so low in the afternoon. So I always start out doing $4 strikes in the AM, and then um, depending on where they are, I have $3 bots set up for the afternoon. So it'll start targeting the 3 bucks. So like with my the ones that I do in in my IB account with with TAT, which is another trade automation toolbox, which is another automated system, you can see here my and this is all my time, central time. So my 845 a.m. tranche, I was targeting four dollars. So I get filled at 450 and four. My 915 was targeting four. My 945 was targeting four. My 1117 one, that was when I manually entered, targeting four. And then at 1225, it's switched over to the $3 strikes. So there's a $3 target, $3 target, $3 target. Oh, wow. I just noticed my 155 tranche only filled the call side and got stopped out. That hurts. I didn't have my thing set up wide enough. There was no... Uh, there's no strike available with the parameters I had. I didn't even, did not even notice it. Yeah. I have to go back and adjust that. That's happened a couple times now. Yeah, not much to do on that one, Dark Avenger, except for just hope volatility contracts, but yeah, probably not going to make it on that October one. Essentially, VXX would need to get below like 40. Could need to get down to like the 42 handle. So it could happen. But We'll see what happens after, I mean, after CPI, PPI, we still have, nine days from today. So we've seen some pretty significant vol contractions after like a CPI, PPI week. So you never know. All right. 
I think I'm going to Netflix kind of popped up to highs a day. I think I'm going to start shedding the rest of these. Not the way I like to day trade, but patience paid off in Netflix today. Ruga needs to move down below 85. All right, I'll leave a few of these Netflix on just in case we get one more push. The indices are looking a little bouncy. Wuga was up 30%. Now it's up eight. Thanks, Mara. Just ban the spammer. Where can you see the PL and toss? For what? What are you looking for there, Matrix? Where can you see the P and L? Percent? I would assume, like when you say you're getting, you know, you're getting close to twenty percent. I assume you're just looking at your monitor tab on the orders. Yeah, it's just the monitor. Well, I'm in Tastyworks, but yeah, toss it is under your monitor tab. So, are you Matrix? Are you on uh, toss? Yeah. So, if you go to your monitor tab and you go under activity and positions. And then you'll see your working orders there. So if you have an order in at 20%, let's say, then you'll you'll be able to see the mark, which is where it's currently trading versus your profit target. So if you have a 20% uh, profit target, you'll be able to see if it's you know getting close to that. Like where your positions are at under your monitor tab, there's a little wheel that you can click on and, and you could, I have PL day and PL percent that's in my, that I, I can view. Um, freedom. If I have one favorite strategy depends on, uh, depends on when you ask my friend. Double calendars have been my favorite lately. Uh, as far as zero DTE stuff goes, the the British Iron Condors, I've kind of gravitated. I'm pretty heavy on those now. Uh, still doing a lot of testing, so my position size is, is not big, but my my uh, activity around those is kind of 
been the heaviest. So I, re I really like those. Um, so I would say those are kind of my, my two favorite go-tos right now. But that changes, you know, I got, I get a lot of people ask me that too. It's like, well, what if you could just do one? Well, that's the purpose of a trade plan is to have a handful of strategies as the market changes over time. Like my magic Mahomes, I was loving for a while, but he's been, he's been a little cold lately. So yeah, Elliot was, likes calendars. Elliot loves calendars. Yeah, Naughty Dog, you came in right, right at the, right at a good time for calendars. They were, they were kind of brutal the first six or seven months. I mean, not, not terrible, but just kind of back and forth, you know, just kind of treading water. Good couple weeks, bad couple weeks. Good couple weeks, bad couple weeks, and then they just absolutely took off. Been on fire. Uh, you can, you can, you can kind of eyeball it here, Matrix. So, for example, let me get my longs on here just so I have it a little bit better. So I'm on the eighty puts, thirty puts, and I'm on the thirty, ninety calls, thirty calls. So, like this. So, uh, if you if you view it on your analyze screen and, and then you say okay my max profit like in this one lot that i have left here my max profit is 500 bucks so then you can just eyeball it and say okay if i get to 250 i know i'll be at 50 percent and then you can just hover your mouse over where price is to see where where it's at compared to your max profit so it's not exact it doesn't show you a percentage but with a quick little math you can have a general idea. There she goes. SPX trying to make another run. Yikes. There goes the Wooga. New all time highs. You just knew it was going to happen. My power hour got stopped after 40%. Woog actually performs the best on updates. Popped its head up to 57.94. And this would be three consecutive full loss Woogas for me. It doesn't come down. Well, my little error on my Bix is going to cost me because I did not get the put side on on my last tranche.
plus 36.40 on three trades for me today on TLC 1DTE. About 24 minutes to go. Let's see what these butterflies are trading at. 95. It's trading at about a buck. 25. Seven green days in a row in October for TLC trades. Ended up making a little over 1100 on that Netflix trade. Still have a 5795 call on one of my bigs. Don't want that to get stopped. Look at my Wuga needs to be below 57.90. And my NDX one needs to be below 2250, 20,250. Still got a shot, just a little pullback. My six seven never got to its forty percent profit targets at thirty three. I close those at today. I don't. I know some people wait till tomorrow, but I'm gonna go ahead and close mine.
In fact, I need to close some of my one, two as well. <clears throat> with CPI tomorrow. Ooh, it's almost at 10%. All right, so Come just on. posted my closing of my six, seven, and my one, two. I'll leave my three, four open. That's the only double calendar I've got open going into CPI. Come on down to 85. About six and a half minutes till MOC. Surely we need to take a little profit taking at the end of the day, push this thing down about five points. It's worked nice. hard. Pushed all the way up through all time highs a couple times. It needs a little needs a little break. A little pullback. <laughs> a little pullback never hurt anyone. Didn't get the pullback yesterday we needed. We will get it today. About 15 minutes till the bell. Butterfly is still trading around 100 or buck 25, buck 30. Keep coming down. Yeah, need a little more. You know, Shis, I have been, um, I used to do a lot more of it, but I've been, I've been trading some and I haven't been posting cause I'm just, I'm just kind of figure out how I want to trade them. But, you know, I've, I've been trading like five sixes, six sevens and able to book 10 plus percent same day. Like this is one with a fourteen fifteen expiration that I put on this morning. It's up six or seven hundred bucks. It's got a uh yeah, it's getting ready to hit profit target potentially. Now everything's been working with calendars lately, so it's almost like no matter what you do. Oh, 
once in your life, SPX, cooperate. <laughs> I mean, you've gone against me. How many days in a row now? Now, Schist, Schist, tomorrow will be a, a, a good test for that kind of thing because after CPI, mm -hmm. if we get the normal kind of big vol contraction and then it continues to contract throughout the day, obviously that does not bode the best for calendars. So doing those... Um, Kind of single calendars that way it'll be a be a good test on a day like that. MOC in two minutes. If you're new here and you haven't had a chance to watch the Magic Mahomes course, it's in the Transformer category. It's an end of day trade. That I'm putting on right now. Work in the 90s and 95s. Yeah, the the Wuga is in my trade plan and the trade plans channel matrix. Ninety butterfly currently trading for about a dollar forty, thirty dollar thirty. MOC in ten seconds. A little sell side action. Twenty two million to the buy side, tiny. Six sell side brackets seven, six nine million to buy side. Teeny tiny. Yeah, we're pushing back up. I uh, fully loaded. I use a site called Financial Juice. So financialjuice.com. Back up towards 95.
was hoping I didn't have to chase the OOs. Work in the 90s, 95s, and the OOs. Yeah, where are my profit takers at? New all time high, fifty seven ninety six. Just tag fifty eight hundred and get it over with, and then come back down. Sitting on the 95s, they look like they are trading for about a dollar eighty-five, maybe. Yes, Wooga. Wooga's kicking us all in the nads in the last couple of days. Sitting on 95, but they're staying a little bit cheap. Nibbling on the 95s. Got filled on three of 20. Come on, hit the rest. Five minutes to go. Anybody else filled on the 95s? Still sitting there. Not filling. My bot still hasn't filled. Is that all you're going to give me is three? Well, my bot just filled on the 95s. Okay, there's the rest. All right, filled on the 95s. All right, let's move down. Move it on down. Wuga needs down below 90.
Mahomes needs below 90. Everybody's going to be happy if we go below 90. I think. Still sitting at 94. I'd be happier at 85. I would definitely take 85. Two minute warning. Creeping back up, still hanging around 95. One minute. Ninety three, a little more. Come on, Wooga, where you at? And into the ninety twos, keep coming. Quick flush, three seconds, ding, ding, ding. Mahomes is going to be a scratch, right at 92. Wuga is gonna be a little loser. Mahomes is gonna be almost an exact scratch. Right at the break even. Alrighty, that's a wrap, my friends. Tomorrow is the 10th. So the live stream will be led by Chad in the morning. And then we'll be back for Power Hour in the afternoon. All right, all. Take care. Have a good night. Cheers.